we don't have the electronics. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Good to see all of us non-hunters have gathered for the official first Sunday of the hunting season. Um, there is a... Actually, something that Shelly has sent to me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> just hanging out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, just quick this morning, I want to share a word that really encouraged me. I hope it encouraged all of you. It's actually from Shelly um, Peters, who um, used to attend here. She sends me things now and then. This really spoke to my spirit, and I wanted to share it. Um, this is a word from uh, Ella Nakoya from London, um, the United Kingdom, and she is talking about God is releasing the reign of his spirit for a divine turnaround. And I know that I've been talking the last few months about the promises that the Lord gave us as a body for 2017, and... Lord, 2017, we're going to be flipping that calendar page yeah. pretty soon. So let's see what uh, let's see what the Lord can do. We know what He is able yes. to do. I believe this is a pivotal and important time in the history of the church. I've been hearing in my spirit the sound of rain like never before. The Lord is releasing an alert for His church to discern the sounds of rain and to be positioned to receive the rain He is releasing that will bring in a harvest of souls healings, restoration, and a divine turnaround from setbacks of the enemy. Lord, we need your rain and we need your river. We must pray from a position of victory before the throne of God where we can see the victory even before we see the manifestation. Keys to be positioned for the rain. We must believe this to be a season of rain and ask accordingly for it. Faith and trust always precedes what the Lord wants to do. Zechariah 10 verse 1 says, Ask rain from the Lord in the time of spring rain. Number two, as the Lord releases his rain on the thirsty ground, he is calling us to be ready for revival and to be positioned to bring in the harvest of souls. Joel 2, 23 and 24 has this beautiful promise. So rejoice, O sons of Zion, and be glad in the Lord your God, for he has given you the early rain for your vindication, and he has poured down for you this, the rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The flesh, threshing floors will be full of wheat, and the vats will overflow with the new wine and oil. I believe that that is what the Spirit is saying to us. Watch out for the thirsty and the dry grounds, for these will receive a heavy deluge of the rain. And so I want to encourage us to not lose our focus as it's a very busy time of year. As we enter the holiday season, there's a lot of activity, a lot of uh, fun, beautiful family activities. But let's not lose focus that the Lord has promised some things for us in the spirit, for each of us individually, for the church, and for this nation, and for this whole world. And be focused on kingdom purposes. Ask from a position of victory, seeing the victory with our whole mind, our whole heart, uh, knowing it to be truth. And standing on that truth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone have any prayer requests or testimonies this morning? Yeah, Roberto. Just to share something. Um, well, first of all, I'm very excited and, and glad to have the opportunity to lead worship today. I really love, <clears throat> excuse me, I really love uh, being put in that position because. You know, it forces me to take a step of faith when I'm picking the songs. Uh, as I'm going through the list of songs yesterday and, and praying about it and trying to see <clears throat> if there's some sort of cohesiveness with the songs that I selected and, and, and if there's a theme, I was drawing a blank and I was like, all right, I feel this is what I have to do. I don't understand why, but then you go ahead and speak those words, which now makes perfect sense. Uh, well, the first song is the, the one that it is. Uh, Which happens to be called? Rain Down. Rain Down. Rain down. Uh, <laughs> so, the other thing is, one thing that we have as Christians, uh, and, and once we have revelation from the Holy Spirit, is it's the understanding of the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and... It's, it's interesting watching people that 
either don't believe or are struggling with their faith, when they're faced with that fact by a, a Christian talking to them about it, it's like they cannot possibly understand, you know, and they keep trying to make all these arguments against it. So I've been uh, listening to this guy on YouTube that I, I don't even know how I found his videos, but his name is Frank Turek. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but uh, he goes to different universities and gives lectures about um, the nature of God and things like that. And he has a book that I think the title is pretty funny. It's called, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. Uh, but I saw a video of this girl that it was in the Q&A in one of his lectures. And, and she said, well, my question to you is, am I going to hell? And he said, well, what's your definition of hell? And they start this back and forth talking about that. And she goes to the whole argument, well, if God is so good, why all these things are happening, blah, blah, blah. And he starts talking about, you know, how God gave us free will. And he said, God will never force you to love him. He said, okay, let me ask you this question. To all the girls out here in the audience, have you ever had this guy following you around, telling you that he loves you? A bunch of people raise their hand. He's like, okay. And you're not interested in the person, you just like him as a friend. And they, they keep going, they keep going, they keep going. And one day, you tell this person that, and then the person, the, the guy responds back to you, well, I know that, but I love you, so I'm going to make you love me. Is that possible? No. Because you cannot force that. It's the same way with God. He loves you so much that if you want nothing to do with him, he'll leave you alone. He'll still try and send you messages here and there to uh, try to persuade you to come back to him, but he will not force himself on you or make you do something you don't want to do. And they can go on like that for about 10 minutes, and then at the end she's like, well, you haven't asked my question yet, but am I going to hell? And, she, and he says, well, he'll send you wherever you want to go. Uh, but I thought it was interesting how uh, when you talk to people, and, and I'm listening to this guy explaining the nature of God's goodness and, and all that, I'm just sitting there and saying, this is so amazing because I have an understanding of what this is, and I can uh, testify to that. So it makes me very excited knowing that God is, is good. But the people that don't believe or <clears throat> are struggling with their faith, when you tell them that, it's like you said. Uh, I don't know, remember if it was your, you said that your mom had a hard time with thinking that God can't forgive a serial killer, you know? And I was thinking about that yesterday, and I was like, that's the beauty of the whole thing, you know? Mm -hmm. If your heart is truly repentant of what you did, He erases your past. Mm -hmm. And so people cannot understand that. So it's very encouraging watching people be Transform when they have that revelation at that very instant when they have that conversation. So, if you know someone that does not understand uh, or is having a hard time wrapping their head around the goodness of God, just continue to show them and, and explain to them. But try to convince them because the revelation will come. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and to go along with the rain, um, <laughs> Nathan asked me to speak on Wednesday night. And, you know, the minute the devil comes in and tries to make me think, oh my God, what am I going to try to speak on? What are you going to, uh? Well, the Lord wanted me to speak on reigning, R-E-I-G-N, <laughs> in this life. And I think that when we do that and we understand our authority and what we are to do reigning as Christ reigned on the earth, the rain will then come down, the blessings will rain down on us. So I just want to encourage that maybe we could all just keep praying about, you know, the rain and rain and earth and, and um, everything that God wants to open up. I keep reminding him, too, of what you said. This is the year of Jubilee. Lord, we've got, yes. what, three weeks. We're in time. He's not. Right. We are. Right. So I just keep um, reminding him of his promises. So thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. You're welcome. You're welcome. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you for uh, praying for Cindy. Her uh, foot is about 80% healed. 
uh, hope to have her back uh, later on this month and uh, just continue praying for her. Uh, we had some Iowa City runs and stuff to take care of some things and, and uh, ran into a financial situation, but the Lord saw us through it uh, besides uh, getting blessed from a, a brother and sister to help things out. Uh, God knows our hearts and I thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> Pat, uh, Rick Arrowwood, whom a lot of you know, uh, who runs the, East, or the Kingdom House of Prayer situation. His dad's been a presbyter for uh, Assembly of God for years and years. An awesome man of God. Uh, he's uh, been going through some sickness here recently, so I just want to lift him up uh, and uh, just bless him. He's been praying for a revival for over 60 years. This guy is not faltering. He's just staying the course, so I just want to lift him up. Well, it's prayer requests or testimonies this morning. Yeah, I was just going to say, on, in reference to what you and Jody both said, I think the Lord immediately brought to my mind Isaiah 55. He said, For as the rain comes down, and I'm talking about yeah. rain, but we're also talking about rain because yeah. the rain is life yes. by His grace, by His mm -hmm. goodness, and by Speaking by like declaring, that's what kings do, they declare things, right? So that's what he's saying, for as the rain comes down, the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but water of the earth, mm -hmm. and makes it bring forth from bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So, that, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. So whatever he said, mm -hmm. it's a reality if we will agree with it and speak it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because he goes on to say, it will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountain and the hills shall break forth before you in the singing, and all the trees of the field clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen. He drops the ball in our court. Yes. The rain comes down and then it's up to us to rain. Yes. On it, based on his word. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm standing here the whole night. No, no, that's just you. Um, because of last week's service, I still want to stand up and scream. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? What you're talking about is raining. And the illustration that he gave was so phenomenal to me because when you look into the river, and he referred to like looking in the glass darkly, when we no longer yes. look in there and right. see beyond our reflection, but see all of creation, yes. who he sees, who he created us to be, then it does flood the earth, yes. and it is glory filling the earth, and it's what he sent it to accomplish. Yes. So... Yeah, pray yeah. for the rain because yes. you know what you see in those reflections. Right. You see who he sees. Yes, Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, James. I do uh, commend Cindy for coming over to the board. Please, it does bring a lot of glory in that place. A lot of negativity in the beginning of the game. Comes over and sees me. That was quite a surprise. And Cindy comes in the car line, looking at me like, "Yeah, the city." I'm like, "Wow!" I said, "That just opened my eyes that we need to uh, focus on the people that are depressed like that." And it helped me a great deal to see Jane and all these people from the congregation that come in high beer, even if. Suzanne or anybody would stop it, it does make that Monday ten times ten times something good. It's great to have you guys reach out. That does help. It is a great we of the first of the month. They didn't have any people holding me hold in the front and it was a great ritual way of seeing that. So the why why this is why I encourage people to to speak out in our community and not be so you know, not worldly but to let our joy flow through through this season, and that's so vital. Because I've known my singing growing up for so many years. Thank you, brother and sister. I really 
command her coming in there, even though she was weak and still support James and everybody in God's glorious kingdom. I really appreciate that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What else is funny? All right, well, let's stand and go to the Lord this morning. Jesus, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the word that you always confirm on us. For one or two or three witnesses, Lord. Jesus, we ask for the rain, Lord. We ask for the rain to come down. We ask for the reflection of your goodness to be to come to our remembrance, Lord, to come to our remembrance. The children will see the summer. Your word will not leave our hearts. We speak your word, Lord, declaring victory, standing in victory, seeing nothing but victory, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. be with us this morning, Lord, as we worship. Jesus, I thank you for the seeds of your word that you've planted in our hearts, Lord, in our spirits, Lord. We ask you to stir up those seeds, that we might be sowers of those seeds, and speak forth your word in faith, Lord. Seeing the end from the beginning as you do, seeing truth over circumstance, Lord. Speaking with boldness, knowing that when we speak your word, it cannot come back void, Lord. It must accomplish that which you sent it forth to do, Lord. And I thank you that you have given every one of us a word of victory, a word of knowledge, a word of freedom, of liberty, of grace and mercy, Lord. And that you give your people boldness to speak life into other people. Lord, to see the circumstance and change, to be world changers, lighting fires, Sending the rain into the parched lands, Lord. Being vessels of encouragement. Bringing life, salt, joy, and peace wherever we go. And in this season where we celebrate your triumphant entry into this world, your humble beginning, Lord, that you clothed yourself, wrapped yourself in flesh, and became a man. Humbled yourself, left all of heaven to come to redeem all of man forever and ever so that we might be one with you, so that we might know you and be like you. We celebrate you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Let us be kings and priests have you have, as you have sent us to be. Let us reign as we watch the reign of your presence transform our lives and the lives of all of those around us for the glory of your kingdom in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm just thinking of all of the songs that Mike, Mike has written over the last couple of years. Give seed, give bread to those, the you know, Raging River, the Raging River. Um, who will start the rain? <laughs> R-E-I-G-N. <laughs> I, mean, yes. I think that the Lord is making it pretty clear what the word for this body is. Yes. And I just encourage all of you to grab a hold of that word and let it bring you life and encouragement. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name. Just a reminder, if you brought a cell phone today to silence them or turn them off. And this Friday night, oh, come let us adore him at the Eastern Gate House of Prayer. Just come and focus on him, uh, kick off all the distractions of the busyness, the discouragement. Uh, this season can't bring on some people. A lot of people are isolated. A lot of people are uh, home ridden. A lot of people are uh, caught up in financial things and there's a lot of despair. We're just going to kick most of this in the curb and pray for those in need. Pray for those that truly see the reason for the season. We will intercede. We will have time for our communion and worshiping our King. So, come to the Lord. Yes. Amen. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, not worship team. So I got trouble with that. <laughs> well, you can take that from us today. Um, I'm looking at you. Eric. Oh, my gosh. Completely drew a blank. I'm like, Eric. <laughs> 
Wow. Yes, I'm Suzanne. We've only been going to church together for 10 years, but that's all right. I completely drew a blank when I looked at you, Eric. I'm sorry. Can you please ask our blessing this morning? Father, we are so thankful. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We do have a community. Yes, Lord. We are one of the conquerors. All things are possible. Yes, Lord. Lord, it's nothing but good news. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Looking forward to you having your way today in this Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless this offering we're about to receive. In Jesus' mighty name.
you can go on and share with people who you are and make you know now what you record the Spirit of the Lord is in. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
It's so good knowing that He loves us so much. And nothing can separate us from that. Let's exalt the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You are great and greatly to be praised, Lord. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our Lord and our God. Hallelujah. King of kings, Lord of lords, you're everything, Lord. The beginning and the end and everything in between. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is no end to you, Lord. You are love. And your love encompasses all of us, fills us to overflowing. And because you have loved, 
we love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great love wherewith you have loved us and given yourself for us and to us. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Amen. Give him a great hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. And the young people can be dismissed to go downstairs. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Praise the Lord. And uh, thank you, Mike, and the worship team for a great job as always. And actually, I should be thanking Roberto and the worship team, although Mike was there too. Praise the Lord. But thank you, Roberto. Great job. Appreciate you uh, sharing your anointing. Amen with us. Praise God. Amen. That's a good thing. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. A lot of people uh, out today. Many of them are hunting deer. Poor things. Praise the Lord. And the others are just out for a good time. <laughs> I don't know where they are. Praise the Lord. No, they're on vacations and things like that. I know uh, John and Sheila are in Kansas City or somewhere in Missouri anyway, taking a few days off because uh, first several days in a row that John's had off for quite a while. So they're getting an opportunity to get away and relax and just get away from the normal routine and be blessed. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. I just want to uh, mention a couple of things as we move forward here this morning. And uh, I think one of the things that I feel like the Lord is really dealing with us about is to get past this this continuous way of thinking that it's always something next, that there's something out there, that there's something we're waiting on or we're, we're striving to get, when in fact what God is trying to tell us that it is finished and it's ours now and we need to we need to be operating from that truth, from that reality. Uh, faith, that's how faith works. Faith is not in time. You can't faith something into existence. It already exists. You just faith it, amen, for its manifestation. In other words, it's already there. It's just a question of whether or not you believe it. Amen. All the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him amen. So they're already, yes, God's already said yes. God's already said so be it, amen. Now it's up to us. And... Uh, we, as long as we keep projecting stuff, we're going to keep waiting. We're going to be unsatisfied, unfulfilled, and incomplete, amen, in who we are in Christ. And I know that's easier said than done, but a lot of it is just a change in the way that we think. And so, so much of the, the way we have uh, been taught, and all of us come from different backgrounds, uh, spiritually speaking, religiously speaking, and that's fine, and there's, you know, it's, we have the common... The commonality is that we are trusting in Christ, that we believe that He is the end, the answer, amen, to everything. And so we're not down on other people who believe maybe some different things. But my concern is not the other people. Uh, my, my focus is this right here, praise the Lord, and myself included. And I want to see these, these promises, these prophetic words that God gives us, I want to see them be re realities in our lives. I don't want us just constantly to be thinking it's going to happen. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying don't do this. I'm not saying that at all. We need to because it needs to open our eyes and our understanding and our hearts to what it is that God really is trying to do. Uh, amen. In and through us. Praise the Lord. But the problem becomes, you know, where we get to the point where it's always what we are not or what we will be someday, right. or who we are not, right. or who we will be in the future, right. or what we don't have, or what we will get when all the stars align, you know, when we get everything squared away and everything is just uh, exactly the way it should be. But the truth is, it is already really finished. Yes. And Jesus, He did it all. He has finished it. Yes. And it's just a question of whether or not we are operating in Christ or just in the knowledge of Christ or an awareness of Christ. Being in Christ is to function in the finished work, is to live our lives, amen, 
as He intended us to. Praise the Lord. You know, what happens a lot of times, we're, 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 we're content with a warm feeling. You know, uh, let me just say, you can get that by urinating on yourself. Praise the Lord. It doesn't... It doesn't sustain anything. It just makes you really uncomfortable later. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to be crude. I'm just saying a lot of times the things that, we, that we're looking for and, and wanting are not really what God's trying to give us. Right. Amen. If we, have, if we understand who we are in Christ, we really operate out of, that, out of this reality, out of no past, no, pre, no, no future, but just the present. Amen. Then we're going to be fulfilled. Right. We're not going to be looking for the you know, a warm fuzzy here or whatever. We're, we're, we're going to be content because we're going to have all things, amen, that pertain to life and godliness right here and right now. So I'm not looking for a short-term thing. I'm looking for eternal realities, amen, and I want them now. I'm not waiting, amen, until you all are throwing flowers at a hearse, you know, when it goes down the road. I'm, I'm not, that's not my focus. My focus is now yes. because my now is my eternity. It's my reality and it always will be. Yes. Regardless of time, it's, I'm always going to be now, praise the Lord, in the spirit, praise God. Yes. So if I haven't totally confused you, I'll endeavor to do that as we move on, praise the Lord. So I want to start, uh, Roberto, with Hebrews chapter uh, 9 and we'll read verses 8 through 12. Hebrews 9, and then 8, we're going to read verses 8 through 12. Wow. Jimmy John. <laughs> Freaky fast. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> okay. I gather myself here. Okay, the Holy Ghost, this signifying... Now, uh, pay particular attention to the words now. Because we have a tendency to just read stuff because we've heard it and we've read it before and we just don't pay any attention. But it's important that we understand what it is we're reading. So, the Holy Ghost, this signifying. So, the Holy Ghost has given us this information or this evidence. Okay? It's signifying. Remember the old, back in the, well, maybe you don't, but uh, back in the 60s and 70s, so, you know, they're signifying. So, anyway, the Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. So, the Holy Ghost was telling them, or explaining to them, or showing them, that the way into the presence of God, or into the holiest of holies, into God's presence, was, wasn't available yet. It hadn't been manifest yet as long as that first tabernacle or the old covenant was in effect. Right. You couldn't come into the presence of God. Only the high priest could do it once a year and that was with a lot of sacrifices and so on and so forth. So that was a figure for the time then present. That was just a picture for them at that time. Okay? It was a, it was a type. It was a shadow. Okay? In which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. So no matter what you did, no matter what sacrifices you give, you still always had a guilty conscience because you knew you were still doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. Right. Even though you were getting a pass, so to speak. Those which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this, not of the structure, not of that building, but this, amen, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right, now let's look at Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now we just saw that the Holy Ghost was trying to show them something under the Old Covenant. But the Holy Spirit could not come to them. He couldn't dwell in them. He could only move on them. He could only give them insights and evidence, but He couldn't be one with them. He couldn't interact with them in that personal way. So He said that the kingdom is in the Holy Ghost. 
They couldn't have the king. Up until John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, everybody violently tried to get the Holy Spirit, or tried to get into that presence of God. Amen? So the kingdom is in the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, you are full of the kingdom, full of the kingdom's purpose and full of the kingdom's potential. Amen? And usually we have these, these preconceived ideas as to or concerning uh, meat and drink. Mm -hmm. Amen? We think it means turkey, dressing, <laughs> pie, you know, a big meal, barbecue, whatever. But in the context of Rome, uh, Romans 14, it's talking about meat that's offered to idols or animal sacrifices. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the kingdom of God is not meat offerings and it's not drink offerings as it says in Hebrews chapter 9. Right. Kingdom of God is not about sacrificial things. Right. The kingdom isn't located in our performance. Right. It's not located in the rituals of religious systems. Right. If you can't go back to Hebrews 9 and 8. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing because the Holy Ghost had not been poured out. That was the reason. But the Holy Ghost is the source. Mm -hmm. And the result of the indwelling spirit is righteousness, peace, and joy. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Holy Ghost kingdom is all about light. It's all about revelation. It's not about religion. It's not about rituals. It's not about traditions. It's about revelation. Because without that, you can't have relationship with God. So the kingdom is all about our relationship with the Lord, our consciousness of the Lord, and therefore our consciousness of who we are in Him. Now, we've made it about our flesh getting better. And so it's easier to give yourself a bunch of things to do, a, a, rit a ritual, a religious kind of thing, rather than to operate by faith right. in our, in our uh, finished reality in Christ. Right. Yes. Because we keep always going back to the physical, back to the natural. Yes. And as I was talking about last week, seeing yourself through a glass darkly, that's not understanding who you are. We're supposed to have a clear vision of who we are. That's what the Bible is for, to show us who we really are in Christ. Amen. Now we say we understand that, but yet we don't live our lives that way. Amen. We don't live with power. We don't live with, with the authority. Amen. And with the fearlessness, amen, that God's trying to, to establish in us. Amen. So look at Matthew uh, chapter 4 and verse 23. See, I think God, I think the Holy Spirit is always challenging us. Mm -hmm. And He's doing that because He says we have to renew our mind to the Word of God. Uh -huh. right. So He's always challenging us to see ourselves as we really are, to see the kingdom as it really is, instead of seeing it through a religious perspective or through some ritualistic way of, of it. Of understanding it. Yes. It has nothing to do with that. Jesus didn't come to give us a different religion. Right. Amen. He fulfilled the, the demands of the religion so that we could have relationship yes. with God. So that we could have freedom and liberty with our God. Yes. So that we wouldn't have to feel guilty. We could come boldly, amen, into the presence of God knowing that we are accepted in the beloved. That there's not something more that we have to do, amen, for God to embrace us, to accept us, amen, for us to get into the holy of holies, amen, into the presence of God. So Jesus went about all Galilee. How many of you know he was full of the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. The kingdom is what he preached all the time. Right. Why? Because he was preaching the Holy Ghost, the kingdom of God. He was preaching this inner facing with heaven, with God, man and God being one. So Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Where the kingdom is, there's healing. Yes. Where, where there's awareness of the kingdom, there is deliverance. Yes. There's prosperity. There's all of these things because it's all ours. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, His righteousness, and all these things then are added to us. Yes. 
And so we're still going through some religious ritual thinking that that's seeking the kingdom when in fact it's not anything of the kind. We have already read all those sacrificial things have been dealt with. They've already been handled, praise the Lord. So the kingdom isn't located in performance, praise the Lord. With the Holy Ghost working in us, living in us, we are not only receivers of the kingdom, but we are releasers of the kingdom. That's what happens every time there's a healing, every time we pray for somebody and they get healed. Every time we pray and somebody gets a breakthrough or gets financial breakthrough or you, you declare it in your own life, the kingdom comes. I mean, the kingdom manifests. That's what we're talking about. It isn't like it's somewhere else. Right. Amen. It's just that it, it's visible then. Yes. It becomes, a, we become aware of it. Praise the Lord. And that's what Jesus walked in that reality and that awareness all the time. Yes. Praise the Lord. And how many of you know we're supposed to be like Jesus? That isn't talking about you being, you know, lily white and never making any mistakes. It means you're going to walk in this knowledge and this, this, this freedom, amen, of the truth of who you are in Christ. I'm telling you, there's not going, I, I'm just, I'll just, this is my thing, you know, okay, so you can just believe it or don't believe it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but the truth is, we're, we're, we're expecting some kind of revival. Listen, revival is right here, it's right there, it's in each and every one of us. And revival isn't coming on some date, amen, when all the stars align in the United States. Or we get the right president, or we, you know, this happens, or that happens. Revival comes when we are aware and wake up to who we are in God and start operating, amen, in that reality. Right. Praise the Lord. So, Matthew chapter uh, 10 and uh, verses 26 and 27. And I've got it coughed up, but I'm either going to have to chew up <coughs> or choke on. Or, option number three, <laughs> tissue. Okay, Matthew uh, 10, verses 26 and 27. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. Now, remember, this is Matthew. This is Old Covenant still. I mean, it's in the New Testament, but it's still under the Old Covenant. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, Jesus is saying, what I'm telling you in darkness, remember this, seeing yourself darkly, right? He said, well, I'm telling you in darkness that I want you to speak in light. Now, I'm telling you some stuff. In fact, they even talk about it. Paul even talks about it. There's a lot of stuff I'd like to tell you, Jesus said, but you're not ready for it. Why? Because you're still in darkness. You don't, you don't have an identity, amen, that's going to allow you to receive this. So he said, I'm telling it to you now, but the day's coming when you're going to have the Holy Ghost, right? He said, later on, the Holy Ghost is going to come. Now, I want you, then when that happens, I want you to speak it in light. Yes. Uh, in other words, I want you to release it from you as a reality in your life so that it will be real to other people, right? So I'm telling you in darkness, that speak you in light so that what you hear in the ear, naturally it's the ears you have but you don't hear, but what you hear in the ear, that I want you to preach from the housetops. Yeah. Amen. What you, what you get, amen, right now is a lesson. I want you to go out and declare it as a reality from the housetop. Don't be afraid to say it. Amen. Don't be afraid to declare it. Hallelujah. So the covenant... Amen. The old covenant, there was no Holy Ghost, right? There was, so there was no kingdom in them. That's what we talk about with John the Baptist again, you know, pressing in. The, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and so forth. Now in Hebrews chapter 9, the way in to the, to the uh, holiest wasn't yet made, he said. The Holy Ghost signifying that the way into the holiest had not yet been made manifest while the first tabernacle was standing. Right. Mm -hmm. While the old system and the old temple was there. It couldn't happen. Amen? Alright, look at Acts chapter 26 and verses 17 and 18. Acts 26 verse 17 and 18. Wow. <laughs> You're freaking me out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send you. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. So that's what this is all about. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified or set apart or perfected. Amen. By the faith that is in me. Alright. Colossians chapter 1 uh, verses 12 and 13. 
giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers, made us able or made us capable or worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You don't get the inheritance in the dark. No. You've got to understand who you are to receive the inheritance. You've got to understand your identity in Christ. You've got to understand that it, it is finished or you're always going to be striving to earn something that you don't get by earning it. You get it by being someone. Yes. A child of God is what gives you your inheritance. You don't do anything to earn an inheritance. You just got to be born to the right people. Praise the Lord. And we've been born from above. So we have a, an inheritance with well, the saints, all of us saints, in light, in our understanding of who we are. Until we get that, we're not getting the inheritance. That's why we get a healing here and then we get sick and we don't see the healing. Or that's why we get a little financial breakthrough and then we got another hassle and then something else comes up. Or we get a breakthrough in this area and we get delivered from something and we're only, only to be bogged down into something else. It's because we're not truly understanding our identity. We're not really seeing in light. We're not receiving in light. We're still looking through this glass darkly a lot of the times. And, that, and by doing that, we can't receive, amen, what it is He's trying to give us. So who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son? Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Praise God. We release the light of this kingdom by preaching the gospel of the king. Yes. Amen. And his kingdom. Yes. Praise God. That's what Jesus was doing. Yes, sir. He is the light of the world. Why? Because he has made us accepted. He has made us righteous. He has made us holy. He has made us, amen, inheritors. Yes. He's the light. Look at him. See your reflection. Yes. Look in his word. Yes. He and his word are one. And see who you are. See your reflection. See your light. Yes. And your light will shine. Praise the Lord. But we're hiding it under a bushel. Amen. We're, we're making it darkness. Amen. Because we don't even believe it. So how are we going to be able to, amen, share that with anybody else? Right. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 8. Uh, verses 10 and 11. Now this might look weird to you here for a moment, but just stay with me because in order to, to make any sense out of it, you've got to see this first. So there's a third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Now Wormwood means bitter. And the third part of the waters became worm wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now, there's all kinds of metaphors here and stuff, and, and I'll just touch on a couple of them. I'm not, that's not, my purpose is not to do that, but other than just to try to, you know, say something here. Satan and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven. They came to the earth, and they brought bitterness, where there was just love, where there was just connection with God, and just perfect stuff, you know? And all of a sudden, now we got death has come to the earth. Right. Wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. Amen. Bitterness came. And, and so that's, that's what we're looking at. Third of the waters became wormwood, became bitter, and men died in the waters. There was information that was bitter. There was, there was revelation. That wasn't really revelation. It was deceit. It was lies. It was, it was bitterness. It was, it was deadly. Praise the Lord. Right. All right. Look at, all right, just for example, look at Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 17 through 20, just to give some kind of context to this. And you're welcome to disagree with me all you want, okay? But I'm just saying, there's a whole, there's stuff here that we're, we've been just dancing around for millennia, amen? That is not really what God's trying to get us to, because as long as we keep doing that, we're going to keep getting the same stuff. We're going to keep getting the same results, Amen. God wants revival, but that revival is in us. Yes. It's not coming down the road somewhere. Hallelujah. It's only going to happen when we recognize who we are and begin to release that. Yes. So the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Mm -hmm. Something happened. When he prayed, the Holy Spirit came upon them, right? Yeah. And they went out casting out demons and healing the sick. And they said, man, this is, this is blowing our mind, Jesus. We've gone out, and even the devils are subject to us now. Praise the Lord. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning. I saw him like a lamp falling out of heaven. 
Behold, I give you unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You, I, you have a heavenly identity. So the big deal is not that we cast out demons. That's just natural for somebody from heaven. That's just normal behavior for us. But we've made it to this great big deal, and therefore, we're always trying to measure up when, in fact, he said, that's nothing for you. Amen. What you need to understand is you've got a heavenly identity. Yes. And that's what makes all of this possible because the devil knows, amen, that you have authority. Yes. He is scared to death. He's scared spitless, amen, of you and every time he sees you, but you don't know it, and so he just deceives you. Yes. He just brings bitterness. Yes. And deception. Yes. Amen. All right. Revelation chapter 22, Jesus. verses 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water. Now, we saw bitter water here just a minute ago, right? Uh -huh. So, he showed me, John the Baptist. What, what showed him? The revelation, that's what the revelation is. The revela revelation is not a spook story or a story about weird, you know, creatures and flying bugs the size of Volkswagens and all that stuff. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes, it is. Amen. And so he said, he, Jesus, showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river... Was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, wait a minute. Just think about this, okay? Just Heaven, as we understand heaven, as we have been taught heaven, or at least the way I've always been taught, it's in eternity. Yeah. It's somewhere other than here. Well, maybe that's just our definition of space, time, all that. But look at this. In the, there's this clear crystal proceeding out of the throne of God, out of the land, and midst the tree of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bore twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. So something here is happening in time. Yeah. Okay? And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, if you're in heaven, what do you need healing for? Am I right? Yeah. Okay. So, let's go on. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. And they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads. And we just heard that our name's written someplace. Yeah. Okay. And there shall be no night there, and they shall need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Yes, Lord. So, we're talking some light here. Yeah. Amen. And we receive light. Yeah. And we don't need light. We don't even need the sun anymore. There is a light enough by, because of the revelation, amen, that we have in Christ. So we have to release the water, amen, of this kingdom. The kingdom water that has no wormwood, that has no bitterness. Right. It's pure waters, clear as crystal. Yes. Praise the Lord. Water that flows from a slain lamb and from the throne of God's kingdom. Yes. That's what that throne represents. Praise the Lord. It flows from His finished work. Yes. Praise the Lord. Look at John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly... Out of our innermost being, out of our spirit, out of our born again as a result of the slain lamb. Uh, we and he are one. Amen. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. But this spake he of the spirit, of the Holy Ghost, of the kingdom. Right? Which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. He has been. And we have. And we are. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. So it's like the Garden of Eden. Yes. Amen. There's a river that runs through it. Yes. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 10. See, we're looking, everything's out here somewhere. No, it's not. Not in God, in us. The Garden of Eden is no different than the book of Revelation. Right. The beginning and the end, there, there's no difference. There is no beginning. There is no end. He's eternal. We are eternal because we're in Him. Yes. Yes. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. And it went out and watered the whole earth. That's my addition to it. But that's what, it, that's what it'll tell you if you go on to read it. We have that spirit. And it should be like a river. Flowing out of us. And touching all creation. Yes, yes. Bringing life. Everywhere it flows. That's what we were talking. That's what we've been talking about. That's what. Right. Amen. That's what Suzanne was saying. Yep. Jody's saying. I was saying. Tammy. Yep. Right. I mean, that's that's what we're saying, whether we understand it or not. Right. If we're looking for something out here in the distant future, we'll still be talking about this next year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This river that flows from the finished work of Christ will cause everything it touches to live. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Alright, back to Revelation uh, 21 and read verses, or we'll put up verses 3 through 7. Revelation 21, verses 3 through 7. See, we're way, way, we're way, way, way more supernatural than we have any clue. Because we could dumbing ourselves down to this natural face, to this darkly seeing it through a glass. Instead of seeing ourselves as God has declared us yes. to be. We are just like Jesus. Yes. We are men and women yes. filled with the fullness of the Godhead. Yes. And we're living our lives as though we're still waiting. Praise the Lord. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And He will dwell with them. And they shall be His temple and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. Praise the Lord. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And He said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And He said unto me, It's done. He's talking to John. Yeah. 2,000 years ago, he's talking to John and says, It's done. I am Alpha Omega. Lord. Beginning and end. Amen. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. We already heard. We've got the Holy Spirit. Out of, out of the throne and out of the slain lamb comes that river, that Holy Ghost. Amen. We've received it. Now out of our belly flows rivers of living water. Hallelujah. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. We have an inheritance. Amen. I'll be his God and he'll be my son. Yes. Yes. That's not gender specific. Amen. Any more than the bride are all females. Right. Praise the Lord. So when God moves in, He starts a major renovation. A program of renovating everything about us. Yes, yes. Amen. And property values always go up. Yes. Hallelujah. We have this great worth. Yes. God in us. God paid the ultimate price. Amen. For this piece of property. Yes. 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 Amen. He gave his only begotten son. He gave his human life. Yes. Amen. For this property. Praise the Lord. So he's determined to make all things new. Yes. yes. Praise God. He does it by making his home in men and women. Yes. Praise the Lord. The former things that he removes are related to the old covenant curse. In Christ, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. We've been made new. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Death, pain, as related to the covenant of death, the law of Moses, it's been abolished. It was done away with in Christ, through the work of Christ, the slain lamb. 
All right, look, uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse 10. 2 Timothy 1 and 10. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I mean, this is, it's supposed to. It's supposed to make you stretch. It's supposed to make you think not like a human. It's supposed to make you think like what you really are, supernatural. Yes. It's supposed to challenge this flesh. Yes. We try to dumb it down to where it makes sense to the flesh, and that's why nothing works right. the way it's supposed to. It is the hiding of the light under the bushel. Uh -huh. It's the salt losing its saltiness, its savory, its, its ability to, to, to cure. To sustain so that it doesn't deteriorate, so it doesn't rot, so that it doesn't decay. Praise God. All right, Revelation 21. Now let's go back uh, to verses 1 and 2. Revelation 21, verses 1 and 2. See, I'm not, I don't want to be the same old guy. He was not that nice. He wasn't that enjoyable to hang out with. Unless you were really high or drunk. And even then he could be a jerk. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Rita. Must have, she must have seen me somewhere. You read something, didn't you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for that amen. Praise God. But anyway, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now remember, let's think spiritual thoughts, okay? So I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is John. He said, I know a new heaven, a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away. They, they, they were no more. Mm -hmm. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. So is Revelation, let me just ask you, this is a rhetorical question, but I'll ask it anyway. Is Revelation 21 past, present, or future? The answer is yes. Oh, yes. No. Because Jesus finished the work. Yes. All those promises are a present reality with an ongoing effect. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are the new temple. Yes. The new creation. The new heaven. Yes. The new earth that was promised where righteousness dwells. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Matthew 5.18 See, I just soon irritate you into thinking something other than what you've always thought as to give you a warm fuzzy yes. and just stay in the same mess. Yes. Amen. That's warm, but man, it's starting to stink yep. and it's uncomfortable. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yep. And I don't know if you ever peed on yourself out in the cold. It's warm for a minute, <laughs> but then that gets really cold. It gets colder than what it was before. Yeah. Now, yeah. Try to relate this to something spiritual and you're really doing good, but I don't really care about all that stuff. I'm just trying to, I'm just saying that's a reality. Yes, it is. So verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it be fulfilled. Now read that again. Yep. I say unto you, verily, he said, truly, I'm telling you, until heaven and earth pass, not nothing in the law. Nothing, not one jot or one tittle, shall in any, way, in any way pass from the law. In other words, it'll be absolutely just what it always is, till all of it is fulfilled. Now, what did Jesus do when he came? Yes. He fulfilled the law. Yes, he did. Now, if heaven and earth haven't passed away, then you and I are still under the old covenant, amen, and still in our sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Logic. I'm just. Get, that's just logic. There. That's not a great stretch. It's just the truth. Yes. Now here, I'll just. Now I've got. I've got a, a lot of books. Okay. And uh, Josephus was a historian who lived, actually, in the time of Jesus in the 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 first century. And he records all kinds of information. In fact, I've got a book, one of his books back there in my office. 
but I've got a couple of others. And, and he is a, a historian of, of Judaism and those times. Hillel, I have a couple of books of his. In fact, I've got one on order right now, another one. He, tradition says he was Paul's rabbi. So they both say the, how the Jews viewed the temple as heaven and earth. Yes. They saw it as heaven and earth together. Why? Because God and man. God's there and man can come there and the sacrifice, sacrificial system and the whole thing, amen, connects, makes the connection, the interface between heaven and earth. That's what the temple was for. I mean, you know, if you want to just go a little further, and I, I'm not trying to make the equation here, but if you, if you read anything about uh, Egyptian history, almost all of the pyramids, all of the tombs of the pharaohs were some way of trying to interconnect with heaven. A way of trying to make heaven and earth come together so that they could have resurrection. Now they obviously did a poor job of it, but, but nevertheless, because we're you know. But I'm just saying that was that's not a that's not a a unique thought to Christianity. It's a thought that's in every human to try to reconnect with God. So he, the temple, God intended it to be that way, that it was an interface. It was a, it was a heaven and earth together. It's how heaven and earth come together. Yeah. Amen. So that was the Jew, that's the Jewish tradition. That's the Jewish understanding. That's what they were taught. That's what their rabbis taught. That's, what, that's the way they understood the temple. That's what they understood it to be. So the temple was the old heaven and the old earth. If that premise is holds, then the old temple was the old heaven and the old earth that has passed away. Yes. Because it's no longer in existence. It doesn't function anymore because it's been fulfilled. The law has been fulfilled. So there's yes. no point in having a temple because a temple can't do anything for anybody anyhow. Oh, right. It just looks good. Yeah. Right. Praise the Lord. So that's the old temple. The temple was the old heaven and the old earth and it would pass away what does the scripture say? With great noise and a fervent heat. What happened when the temple was destroyed? They burned it to the ground. They raised the whole thing. A great noise. They, they tore the thing down and burned it. Yes. It's prophesied. It, it, and, and then we know in 60 AD it happened. Right. It's history. It's fact. Yes. Glory. Praise the Lord. So it gave way to a new heaven and a new earth. Wherein, the scripture says, righteousness dwells. Praise the Lord. A new temple made up of believers yes. is now the house of God. Yes. His temple. Yes. The interface that brings heaven to earth. Yes. Lord. Yes. Spirit yes. and flesh. Yes. God, man. Yes. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 7 and verse 4. Because here's what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't think I am because it makes, it makes sense. You don't have to, you know, be a rocket scientist. But my point is this. Unless we get this, unless we get our minds renewed to this. See, because if, if we do, imagine how different you will live your life. Imagine how differently you will look at life. That's right. See, we've been trying to do it by hook or crook. You know, we've been trying to do it by just enough effort or you get, you know, some little ritual going here and maybe, you know, something will happen and you'll get it. No, it's not. That isn't it. We get our minds. We have the mind of Christ if we would just operate in it and quit trying to dumb everything back down to our humanity. Is it a Yes, it is a challenge. It's supposed to be. But we are capable. We are totally able to be this reality to, to see this reality exist in us amen so Romans chapter 7 verse 4 wherefore my brethren you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God all right first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? 
We are. We are. We are the city of God. Yes, we are. We are the New Jerusalem. Built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Yes. 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 Oh my gosh, glory. See, this is what Jesus taught, and this is why everybody freaked out. And it's why even today, most people would rather go somewhere and hear what they've been hearing for the last 30 years because it's just warm, fuzzy. It just feels good, and it doesn't affect me. I could go on being my same dysfunctional self. Yes. That's what happens. Because, I mean, that's just the way it is. Yep. No. Because without an identity, without an understanding of who we are, we're not going to change. Right. Without knowing that we have capacity yes. of, for heavenly, for godly, for power, for spiritual yes. uh, influence, yes. we're just going to keep on rolling the dice and hoping that tomorrow will be a better day than yesterday right. was. When I've got eternity in me. Yes. Every minute yes, of every day, forever. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Mm. Hebrews 12, verses 22 and 23. Hebrews 12, 22 and 23. See, if we're afraid to be challenged, if we're afraid to challenge ourselves, this is what I said, this is what God told me, and I had no idea what He was talking about. I just know he said, unless you're willing to go back and read this thing like you've never read it before. Not like, not like ten times harder than you ever read it before, but like you've never even seen it before. Right. Then nothing is ever going to change. Right. You're just going to keep repeating the same stuff over and over and over. You're just going to keep doing what somebody did before you. Yeah. And that's why this thing has to come alive to us. And we have to look at it and not be afraid to see something different than what we've seen before. If anything's ever going to change. <laughs> I didn't know that that's what God was saying. I thought He was just saying, dump that doctrine that you've been carrying around. That wasn't it, because a lot of it was good. A lot of it was true. It's just that I was getting stuck in nothing but that. I couldn't move on. See, every, well, here's what we've done. Religion has done this. Every time somebody gets a revelation, they start another church. And that's why we've got 10,000 denominations today. Not because there's 10,000 different gods or 10,000 different... You know, religions, well, I guess there are 10,000 different religions, but not 10,000 different relationships. Right. But because my new revelation doesn't fit your old revelation, it, we can't work together, so i got to move on and start something else. And then somebody, one day by, you know, revelation says, you know, look, God said this. And I'm going, oh, wait a minute, he didn't say that to me. You know, it ain't smoke unless it's coming out of my chimney. Right? right? So you've got to go somewhere else now and do your thing. Right. And that's why we've got Baptists. And that's why we've got Methodists. And that's why we've got Calvinists. And that's why we've got all these other religions. Because nobody could just say, wow, wow. God, stop, stop talking. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So. Yeah. You are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Praise the Lord. Uh, Revelation 3 and verse 12. Praise God. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Part of the structure. In the temple of my God. And he will go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. Which is what all we've been reading about. And the name of the city of my God. Which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Yes. On me is the name New Jerusalem. Yes. City limits, right here. Yes. You're entering New Jerusalem. Yes. You're now entering. Yes. Can you get it? I mean, that yes. freaks me out. I mean, I'm just telling you, that's what he's saying. Yes. I got a new name. Lord. I'm Jerusalem. 
Praise the Lord. The city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are God's new creation. I mean, can you see it? Yes. Yes. John starts by saying, come and see. And then he ends by saying, and I saw. And I saw. Woo, what I saw. Yes. So the question to us is, what do we see? Yeah. Can we see the new creation? Can we see the new heaven? Can we see the new earth? Can we see the new temple? Can we see new Jerusalem? See, Revelation 21 can't be talking about heaven. Just read it. Because outside the city are dogs and whoremongers. That ain't... And whoever makes a lie, it says. No, heaven isn't some gated community with all the derelicts running around outside the fence. They're not there. They're, they don't exist. This is not heaven he's talking about. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying there isn't heaven. I'm just saying we've made something that isn't heaven, heaven, so that we don't have to deal with who we really are. That's the revelation that John got. Yeah. A revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. I see through a glass darkly. What do I see? I see a little Christianity and a whole bunch of Nathan. Mm -hmm. But when I see it face to face, yes. Right. Yes. I see Jesus. Yes. When I look in the mirror, I see Jesus. Yes. He called it a mirror. I didn't. Because if it were up to me, I'd say it was a book. Yeah. But it isn't a book. It's a reflection of me. Yes. Yes. And this word is Jesus yes. Christ. That's right. Now you can say that's blasphemy, but that's what they said to Jesus when he came saying, I am my father's son. Right. I am my father are one. He that's, that's what he tells us. Right. See, if we're not being accused of blasphemy, maybe we just don't even know who we are. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's still, in, read, read Revelation, there's still a need for ministry to the nations. Right? The fruit's on the tree, right? Like, for the healing of nations? Yes. For the healing of people? Yep. You don't need, there's no healing going to be needed in heaven, I promise you. Mm -hmm. Leaves of the trees are for healing. The gates of the city are not shut day or night. So there's access to the kingdom. God. People are still told to eat from the tree of life. Why? Because they aren't saved yet. Drink from the pure river that flows from the slain lamb and from the throne of God. Why? I'll never thirst again. Once I drank, I'm not going to be thirsty. It's not me that's thirsting. It's those that are still thirsting after righteousness that haven't been born again. Amen. It's not heaven. That's not heaven, or they'd already they wouldn't be thirsty either. No, they wouldn't. Exactly. God finally realizes his dream. He says to Moses, Let me build me a house. Let me build me a house so I can dwell among them. Yeah. Not you build me one. Let me build one. Yes. Yeah. Amen. How many of you have bought a house before or rented an apartment or rented a condo or something? It's probably not what you would have done if you could just do it your way, right? I mean, it might be a nice place. You might like it. But when you get to do, draw the blueprint, yeah. some of you may be lucky enough. I think Ron and Diane kind of did that. But you know what I'm saying? Most of us kind of settled sure. for something close. Right. Something we hoped would, you know, be all right. Better than... Something else, you know? Mm -hmm. No, God said, I'm going to design this thing yes. exactly how I want it. Uh -huh. It's going to be my place. Right. I'm going to build me a house. Yes. Emmanuel, mm -hmm. God with us. Mm -hmm. City of God is the community of faith. Yes, it is. It's the believers. Yes. It's where God dwells. 
It's where God conducts kingdom business through. Yeah. Oh, yay, oh, yay. <laughs> you know, hear ye, hear ye. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right, we'll wrap up. A couple of scriptures here and we'll finish. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. When he said, I make all things new, he meant he makes all things new. He didn't say this is some renovation that I'm going to you know, make you feel a little bit better about yourself. No, he said, you, you're not even going to know you. Seek ye, and again, I'm not talking about, you know, perfect behavior here. I'm talking about our true identity. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. We're seeking something other than that. We're, we're, seeking, we're seeking a religious kind of avenue or approach when he says, just seek the kingdom of God in his right and his righteousness. That's all that Revelation's talking about. Praise the Lord. The righteous dwell. Praise the Lord. Luke 17, verse 21, and we'll quit. Luke 17, verse 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's not off you know, 2,000 light years west mm -hmm. and north of Mars. <coughs> mm -hmm. It's right here. Yeah. It's right now. Heaven came to earth yes, yes. in Jesus. Yes. And every time we get uh, a person is born again, heaven mm -hmm. comes again. Yeah. Pray like this, he said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done mm -hmm. in earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Now let me just, let me just say this. Again, you don't have to believe this. I mean, I'm, I'm not, that's, I just think if you're, if you're not challenged to rethink, mm -hmm. then I, I just feel sorry for you because nothing has changed. Listen, I've been doing this and trying to figure it out, and, and I'm not saying I got all the answers. I, I dig up everything I can find. I read anything I can get my hands on. And unless I can see that it's absolutely anti-God, I'm not afraid of it. Because the stuff that I already knew didn't really change anything. I used to tease my youngest brother, who's now since deceased, but when we were young, I was crazy. I mean, I was into drugs and alcohol and all kinds of stuff, not just that, but all kinds of just living like a wild man. And he was a little more subdued, let's say. And he'd give me a hard time and when we'd get together. and Not vicious, just, you know, he'd just give me a hard time. And I'd just laugh it off. And I tell him, I say, Dan, you're in danger of dying without ever having lived. Because I thought, you know, I'm living. You're just existing. But I'm doing everything. I'm doing anything, you know. Well, that was a poor way of looking at life. But yet, there is an analogy here for this. That there are so many people born again that are never going to live the born again life until they die. And that's not the way it's intended to be. But unless we're willing to step outside the box and start looking at things differently, I mean, the thing is, when you look at this and then look at the scripture, it makes sense. It may, it, 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 it just says, you know, like, yeah, maybe, maybe, I, maybe that's right. Maybe there's something going on here that we haven't been willing to embrace. I don't know how. I mean, I I don't I can't tell you that here's the there's a seven step program here for this. I'm saying we just got to change the way we think about ourselves and about our relationship with God. And until we can do that, then the rest of the stuff is all just pie in the sky. It's no different than just saying, well, one of these days we're going to have a revival. No, I'm telling you all the revival that's ever going to take place already happened. Yeah. 
It's already in us waiting to be released. And we can have all the meetings and we can have all the other stuff that we do and we won't be any closer to this reality until we're willing to change the way that we think about it. Because we'll have a shot here and something will happen and we'll feel the presence of God and we'll get blessed because of His goodness and His mercy and His grace. And, and we'll try to help use that to sustain us until the next meeting. But all we're getting is a warm feeling. And then del- having to deal with the after effects. I'm going to get, really get blessed and then go back out there in the world. And it isn't 10 minutes before you get a white hot slap across the face with reality that just says... What's going on? How can this be? Because we are the ones that got to change it. We can't just walk out there and think that God's going to swoop down and do something when He's already done everything He's going to do. We have to start seeing us as the as the generation, amen, that's going to usher in the return of the Lord. Uh, you can take that any way you want to, but I'm saying, yes, the Lord's there's a coming back. There's a literal truth here, but there's also a spiritual reality that He's trying to get us to understand. The Lord will return when I wake up to the Lord's return. Yes. Yes. When I realize He has come. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. And what will happen? I'll be caught up to meet Him in the air. I'll be caught up into the Spirit and there will I ever be with the Lord. Instead of, I'm there until the next stupid thing happens and I feel like I'm sucked right back down into earth. I, I just don't believe that you can be so spiritually minded that you're of no earthly good. I think until we get completely spiritually minded, we're not of any earthly good. We're no better than anybody else. We can't help them if we can't help ourselves. We ought to be radical enough. We ought to be changed. Praise the Lord. We ought to be the pyramid. Amen. We ought to be the temple where God interfaces with earth. Where people see the person of God. Hallelujah. Won't it be shocking? See, they, when they saw Jesus, they said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, we've seen Jesus. We know Jesus. We know His brothers. We know His sisters. We even know the history of His family. It's not that great. So I, I'm, I'm not really that concerned about people saying, <laughs> Nathan, you know, he's like born again. Yeah, I'm in good company. I'm right there with Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm just challenging you. Let's let's get crazy. Let's get thinking who we are and what we are. And try that for a while. Because for all I can see, what we've been trying Mm -hmm. has not been that effective. So how about we just get nuts about Jesus? See what that performs. See what that produces. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what they did. You know, they said of Jesus, they said, uh, man, did you hear what he said? We never heard anybody talk like this before. Now, they've been in church all of their lives. We never heard anything like this. So he was pushing some buttons that nobody had pushed. In fact, he was pushing buttons they didn't even know were there to be pushed. This thing is so much more than we thought, than we think, than we have believed. We just thought it's, you know, more religion. If I can get enough of that understanding of that religion, then I'll... No, man, I mean, this is so beyond that. This is, this is just a new creation. And I'm telling you, if, if you really start thinking this way, Hey, yeah, you might, you might miss it here or there. I'm not, you know, look. So what? We've been missing it for 2,000 years here and there. And, and nobody's been too troubled about that. So why get so freaked out about maybe I'll think something that I'm not supposed to think? Hell, you're thinking something you shouldn't be thinking all the time, probably. Unless you're a lot different than me. Praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So why not? 
why not be the since we're the you know that little church down there that you know has like 12 people in it we've got the best opportunity in the world because we don't have to prove anything to anybody we don't have to answer to anybody but God Amen. praise the Lord Amen. and maybe that's why we are what we are and where we are and who we are because God's wanting to do something yes. altogether new yes. as far as religion's concerned. Yes. And he wouldn't get his foot through the front door of any denomination. At least I don't think so. None that I've been in. Not if he really wanted to just lay the cards out on the table and say, here's what's going on, guys. You want to be a part of it? Something, something different has to be the yes. truth or we would have had the return of the Lord. We would have had that end time revival somewhere at some point. And it's not God's fault. It's not God withholding it from us because we know He's already given everything that He had for all of us to be saved. So there's something about the way we're understanding and there's something about the way we're responding. That's the problem. So I think yeah. my way of looking at it is, even if I'm wrong, God will give me a pat on the back and say, nice try. At least you tried. At least you, you, know, you, know, you, you were willing to do something rather than just keep marching in the same rut that everybody else has marched in, expecting to get someplace that nobody else has gotten to. I don't know. I, I think it was uh, Robert Frost. I don't know. could be wrong. but Who said, you know, he was out in the forest or something and he said I I made a choice to follow the path least traveled mm -hmm. and I think maybe that's what we all need to be thinking mm -hmm. maybe we've been beating the same old path into a rut going nowhere right. and maybe it's time we just took a fork in the road mm -hmm. and tried something different yes. tried not not disregarding God not yeah. just you know what I'm saying holding on to those fundamental truths but allowing a, a new vision, a new vista, a new horizon, something other than what we keep seeing that isn't take, getting us anywhere. Right. So, praise the Lord. Amen. If you find out I've been committed, <laughs> my worst fears will have come true. No. Sally sold some tapes to a doctor. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> they caught me. Praise the Lord. No, praise God. God is good, and He wants us all, amen, to experience Him to the uttermost, amen. And to do that, we gotta, we got to give it a shot, try something yes. different, amen. And, and uh, not a different God, just a different approach, just a different way of relating to Him and re accepting the, the way He wants to relate to us, amen. All right, enough said. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here. Have a great week. Get out there and be, you know, really supernatural. Yes. Freak somebody out this week. Amen. Show them your Jesus. Praise yeah. God. Amen. You're dismissed in his name. Praise God. Yes.